Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's uh, exactly half past one on a magnificent day here in West London. Hope it's as good where you are. Welcome to our VectorVest webcast, uh, where I'm going to do my best to walk you through uh, the VectorVest process, or at least my uh, uh, interpretation of the VectorVest process. Great to see you all. We've got people from all over the world. Yes, Paul, it is exactly the same as this one, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Paul. Uh, so, uh, uh, folks, the first thing that I have to do uh, is to put up uh, the VectorVest disclaimer. Uh, VectorVest is, I think, the only uh, company in the UK that sells both investment software and investment education that's authorized by the regulator, the FCA. I could be wrong on that, but I think I'm correct. Uh, Although I'm qualified to give financial advice, I can't do so because I haven't sat down with you and done a long and a detailed fact find. I'm allowed to talk about stocks that I hold myself, but I have to make it very clear that although those stocks are suitable for me, they may not be suitable for you. And uh, in addition, uh, the FCA have asked me to say that frequently I take positions in uh, commodity stocks I know that sector of the market very well, personally, but I have to make it very clear that those stocks are subject to the ups and downs of the commodity cycle, and they certainly wouldn't be suitable for a, a conservative uh, hands-off investor. So that said, uh, we can move on, hopefully, to matters more interesting. Hello, Julie. Good to see you. So we've got uh, quite a few new names in the room, folks, and uh, uh, quite a few uh, regular VectorVest customers. It's great to see you all. Uh, so uh, that's our objective, to invest with confidence and outperform the market in a few minutes a day. Now, let me get this clear. We're not talking about day trading, buying at 10 o'clock and selling at 10 past 10, and nothing could be further from the truth. We want to try and pinpoint and manage a portfolio of stocks in a few minutes every evening. Most evenings, there'll be nothing to do. Okay. Uh, so those of you that are, are watching on YouTube, you'll be able to uh, pretty much see how I've aged. That photograph's a couple of years old. Well, that's not true. It'll be three years old this Christmas. Uh, it was taken just before the portcullis fell on travel before uh, the uh, pandemic uh, at the New York Stock Exchange. So uh, that's yours truly. Come October this year, it'll be 40 years since I put on my first trade in the stock market. Uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, I've been uh, trading full time uh, since uh, April, 1988. And for the last, I suppose, 12 years now, I've been helping people improve their performance with the VectorVest product. Initially in South Africa, quite a few South Africans in the room this afternoon. Uh, and uh, then in the UK, I've been back in the UK full time for the last five years. Uh, and uh, and also in the US, I do an awful lot of work for the US, uh, VectorVest US at the moment as well. Uh, this is about you rather than about me. So uh, what I'm going to try and get across in a few minutes is the VectorVest system of analyzing shares, market timing. Uh, we believe that there's a really good time to be in the market and an awful time to be in the market. And certainly for most of 2022, it's been an awful time to be uh, exposed to the stock market. The stock market has been falling as the market uh, is running for cover on this uh, tightening, uh, interest rates rising, central bank pulling money out of the system. Uh, and uh, that has caused what you've experienced in your portfolios over the last few days, few weeks. And then what I'm going to try and do is to walk through the process, uh, or at least one facet of the process towards the end of the presentation. So. If we start with the VectorVest system for analyzing stocks, and uh, throughout uh, the talk, folks, uh, I, I tend to refer, call stocks and shares, uh, I use the words interchangeably. They mean the same thing to me. Uh, so 
The cornerstone of Vectorvest is valuations. Mm -hmm. And we firmly believe that uh, we should be buying into stocks that are trading below our measure of valuation. And uh, uh, value is a function of earnings, profits the company makes, inflation in the general economy, and interest rates in the general economy. And uh, the founder of Vectorvest, Dr. Bart Delito, has in fact uh, put together a valuation algorithm which puts a number to every share in the stock market every single day. So at a glance, we can see what's a company worth. And our objective is the following. We want to try and put a number to what's a stock really worth, how safe is the earning stream. And those two things would in fact be a fundamental measure of the company. And then we want to get an idea, what, what's the share price doing? Is it rising? Is it slugging itself out sideways? Or is the darn thing falling? Is the share on a buy recommendation, a hold recommendation, or a sell recommendation? And this, folks, is a technical measure of the share price itself. And everything we do at VectorVest, I don't care what strategy it is, whether it's ultra aggressive or whether it's long-term uh, retirement portfolio thinking, we want to try and put together both methodologies of analysis. We want to try and put together the best of fundamentals with the best of technicals. My definition of fundamental analysis is that it's the search for the true value of a share and my definition of technical analysis is it's a study of trends and turning points. And at VectorVest, folks, our vanilla prescription is to find a stock that's undervalued, that's growing earnings strongly and safely, that's rising in price. Now, I'm not saying that it has to go up in a straight line. Stocks go up in a series of even the best performing stocks go up in a series of rising bottoms, as technician referred to it. And these could easily, the stock could easily be a buy and then go to hold and then back on buy again, back to hold. And then sooner or later, they all happen. The share, as defined by a, a hero of mine, a fellow called Richard Wyckoff, used to say that the stock falls through the ice. And then it moves to a sell prescription. Sometimes you get false signals along the way. It's not perfect. We're dealing with markets here. And uh, sometimes they require a, a level of resilience to take money out of them. You've got to say to yourself, what's the alternative uh, uh, to making money if you weren't born with it? Uh, you can start your own business. But I like the expression of Alan Sugar or Lord Sugar to me. He says that starting your own business uh, is as close as a man can get to having a baby. Uh, okay, not easy. So uh, uh, we want to find a stock that's undervalued, uh, that's growing earnings strongly and safely, that's rising in price. Uh, and we want to do our best to try and hang in there until it falls through the ice to ignore all these little short-term ups and downs. And that's the vanilla VectorVest prescription. It's not that difficult and certainly not that difficult to understand. And VectorVest puts together everything that you need to know to make that happen into numbers that are easy to react to. So let's go through this. Uh, the first proprietary number in VectorVest, folks, is the value of a stock. The second proprietary number is a measure of the future. It's called relative value, and it's a measure of the long-term price appreciation potential. When I say long-term, I read three years. So it's an indicator of the long-term price appreciation potential 
relative to what a corporate bond will pay in the same three years. So what the software does is to do this, it's quite a complicated calculation. We estimate, struck by, the earnings of every company on the LSE for the next three years. And we get that data from FactSet, which is the world's top provider of such. I'm incredibly impressed with FactSet. Those of you that have a Twitter account, you could do an awful lot worse uh, to follow FactSet, F-A-C-T-S-A-T, on uh, Twitter. They put out some ex very, very good information uh, on their Twitter feed. Uh, so we get an idea of how much will the stock make next year, the year after that, and the year after that, three years out. We make the following assumption. We assume that those earnings will be discounted into the share price at some time within that three-year window. And we work out what the projected price will be. We take the projected price and we subtract the price uh, today to get the upside. And we divide that upside by what a corporate bond will pay in the same period. Now, if the RV, relative value, is less than one, folks, that's not good. That could be because the share, the share could be growing earnings strongly, but it's too expensive now. In other words, there's no upside. Uh, or it could be because earnings growth is slowing down. Could be a lot of reasons for the RV being less than one. But if the RV is less than one, that's saying that you'd be better off putting your money into a corporate bond. You'd be taking a risk in something as intrinsically dangerous as a stock when you could actually get more money in a risk-free investment. Now, if the RV is greater than one, that's not bad. And to really push the share price, I want to see an RV of greater than 1.25. In other words, uh, the earnings are coming in uh, and the uh, upside in relation to the price today is significantly higher, 25% higher than what we can get from a corporate bond. This is our best shot at the future, ladies and gentlemen. And the future is a slippery commodity. And certainly in my portfolio, I don't want to, in fact, look at stocks with an RV of less than 1.25. And in the little uni search, which I'm going to put up a little bit later, where I look around the market uh, looking for stocks that suit my objectives, that's one of the parameters, RV greater than 1.25. So to start with, I want to find a share that's trading below its valuation now. And I want to find a share that's got upside over the next three years above, greater than equal to 25% above what a corporate bond will pay me. That's where I'm starting. Now, the next number is an exact number because it looks at the past. So the algorithm looks at the balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, sales, sales growth, margins. Are they rising? Are they contracting? Looks at dividends, dividend safety, dividend growth. And sucks them up into one single number known as relative safety. Now, less than one on the RS, that's not good, folks, because it's saying that these numbers have been up and down, in and out. Maybe the company's not making any money at all over the last five to six years. Now, that could be perfectly fine for a short-term swing trade, but certainly for a hands-off portfolio, that increases significantly the probability of a major blow, a, a major change uh, to the share price, a surprise. Very common in small little mining companies. We have a, a, a very experienced miner in the group, I see. 
if you've got one little mine in the middle of nowhere with one shaft and some idiot drops a wheelbarrow down the shaft, well, the whole mine is stuffed. Uh, all sorts of things can happen to a very small mine, never uh, even not counting uh, the uh, the price of the commodities going up and down. So all thing, all sorts of things can happen. Typically, small little mining companies have got a very low relative safety, and that's why they should only be you. They only should be looked at by the most aggressive investors. Greater than one is not bad. And folks, when you get an RS above one point three on a scale between zero and two, that's a company that's making money, and all those ratios are getting better. Now. If you are conservative and you're very hands off, that's where you want to be. And if you've got a company with an RV of 1.25 and a relative safety of 1.3, then you've got a company that's growing earnings both strongly and safely, and that's a very good place to be. Now, I've managed money professionally for high net worth individuals for quite a long time. I don't do that anymore. I'm too old. I couldn't be bothered. But if I was managing your money, that's where I would put it. Because the probability, I'm looking for both growth and safety. And if you want a quiet life and you want to play a great deal of golf, that's where you should be as well. Now, over the last two and a half years now, well, two years and a couple of months, since the COVID low, March 2020, we've only had one company that's let us down with an RV of greater than 1.3, and that was Avon Protection, just one. And Avon Protection, uh, you probably know, bought a pup from 3M uh, and uh, that was selling body armor. We had a great run in it at uh, uh, Vector Vest, and then it fell through the ice, as Mr. Wyckoff used to say, uh, and I certainly got out of it, uh, but uh, the body armor simply didn't work, and as I keep reminding everybody, it could have been worse. They could have tested the body armor on you. Uh, so uh, a high relative safety doesn't remove surprises it just minimizes surprises so you're not going to have to handle with earnings cratering all that often if you're managing risk aggr more aggressively with stop loss orders and you've got the emotional response to be able to action those stop loss orders there's a big difference ladies and gentlemen between uh being a risk taker or thinking that you're a risk taker and accepting the risk. So if you've got the emotional response and the experience, then by all means that you can look at lower RS stocks and certainly there you can find stocks that have been misplaced a lot. High RS stocks tend to be well managed, well looked at, so the probability of big, big moves goes down. Uh, but they tend to be quite efficiently priced, but uh, uh, RS is less than one, certainly. Then there can be vast, poor, inefficient pricing, and there you can get 50 or 70% moves, uh, but that comes at a price uh, in that you can get three or four out of your 10 or 15 stocks that actually crater on you. If you've got the emotional response to get out of those, that can be very profitable. If you haven't, uh, then I quite frequently see portfolios uh, with seven or eight big, big losses in them, and they just sit there for years because the person doesn't want to get out. They say to themselves, well, it's down 70% now. What's the point? I'll just hang in there. Has that ever happened to anybody else? It certainly happened to me in the early days. Uh, it doesn't happen anymore. Uh, so uh, where do you want to be? You just need to think on this. 
And then the last number, the vector S number, is all about the trend. Now, this is quite a simple number to calculate. Oh, it's very important. Uh, on a scale between 0 and 2, less than 1 means the darn thing is falling. Greater than 1 means the darn thing is rising. And the further above 1, the faster it's rising. And I'm not going to talk about it today, but I have a uni search uh, that looks for shares uh, above one point where the RT has broken up one point above 1.25 and that finds shares that the trend is starting to really start to motor. Paul says he's got problems with the noise, with not the noise, with the sound. Paul, maybe if you get out and go back in again. Anybody else got problems with the sound out there? We had this yesterday, folks, where uh, somebody uh, said uh, that the sound was breaking up at our weekly uh, Q&A. Uh, Julie says it's fine for her, Paul. Uh, Robert says it's fine. Andy says it's fine. So, Paul, I think you just need to go out and go back in again. Uh, Rudy says it's fine. Uh, 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 it must be the, your connection, or it could be go to webcast, uh, uh, just uh, causing us grief, okay? Uh, 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 so, Pete says it's okay there as well. Thanks, thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. Uh, when the, the IT doesn't work, uh, it, uh, it's very stressful. And uh, there's a little bit of noise in the background here in Notting Hill today. And to get away from noise in Notting Hill is mission impossible. Uh, there is somebody putting up scaffolding next door. Uh, Paul McCartney's daughter lives next door, Stella McCartney. She's got the full house. Uh, her house is a similar size, but it's been broken up into 13 flats. Uh, so, uh, uh, I blame it on Maca. All right. Uh, then what Dr. Delito, who's the founder of VectorVest, did, folks, is he put together RV, RS, and RT into the one single number. Now that, and this was the first time I'd ever seen it, put together two measures of fundamentals and a measure of the technical position into the one single number. And as a default, all of the shares on VectorVest UK, VectorVest World are sorted by this combination of fundamental and technical analysis, the best of both worlds. Now, some of you may know my dear friend, Zach Meir, and uh, Zach is primarily a technical analyst, I suppose, like myself. That's why we've been mates for such a long time. Uh, but uh, Zach, uh, when he first, when I first introduced him to VectorVest, uh, his first expression was, VectorVest is the best of both worlds, the best of fundamentals, best mixed with the best of technicals. And we want to find the very best stocks. For me, that's a mixture of growth and safety. In my own investing, I'm happy to pull the relative safety down a little bit because it's my own money. But again, I'll say, if I was managing your money uh, for a quiet life, the last thing I want to do is to fall out with people. And I assure you, when you manage money, everybody tells you that they, uh, when you're signing up the mandate that they understand risk. But once you send them out a monthly report with, uh, with red on it, you'll find that they don't understand as much about managing risk as they initially said they would. And you've got the phone in your hand and the old phone is red hot. The plastic's melting in your hand. They're shouting at you so much. So uh, managing money, you don't want surprises. Uh, so undervalued stocks, stocks with a high RV, stocks with a high RS to get that wonderful, sexy mixture of growth and safety. In my own investing, I'm quite happy to pull the RS down a little bit. Uh, and certainly, a, as long as it's above 1.1, I would be reasonably happy with it. Uh, that means I need to manage risk a little bit more proactively 
uh, and if I do get a, a sudden move against me, well, uh, my money management's quite good. It's not the end of the world, and it's my own money. I can only, uh, if I go around the corner to the sun and splendor, a couple of pints, and I've forgotten about it. Okay, uh, so that's my local pub around the corner. Uh, so. Uh, uh, we put a stop loss to every share in the market every single day. So that there is a clear line in the sand as to when the share is not doing what it's supposed to do. And that certainly is a guideline where you need to think very seriously as to whether you want to hold the stock or not. Now, stop losses are not for everybody. And especially if you've got a high RS stock, you may decide to hold on to the share. And in Dr. Dolido's little book, it's called Stock Strategies and Common Sense. He addresses that in a great deal of detail. All I can tell you uh, is what I do. And I manage based on a history of uh, managing money for people uh, where drawdown, as soon as you have drawdown or big drawdown, like this year's drawdown, uh, clients just run for the door. So I, I manage my positions reasonably closely. And when a share gets down to the vector vest uh, uh, stop price, I'm not saying I get out straight away, but I certainly look uh, uh, very carefully indeed. And I've got a couple like that in the portfolio that I'm holding at the moment. Uh, Cape Tech is one in, uh, which has clipped the vector vest stop loss, and I'm watching that very, very closely. Uh, we talked about that yesterday afternoon. If it should break that three pound level uh, and close below the three pound level, well, it's gone. Uh, simple as that. Uh, uh, we put a buy, sell, or hold recommendation to every stock in the market every single day. Uh, and recommendation is a legal thing. It still means you need to think about it. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't advocate you going out and buying it. It's a recommendation that you can think about that. There's a subtle legal difference, folks, in terms of the uh, FCA. Uh, so uh, a buy signal, uh, sell signals below the stop loss, and a hold somewhere in between. As I say, they go up the page in a series of steps. Uh, and with any luck, that's buy, that's hold. Uh, then go into a buy again, and then it goes to hold, and uh, then sooner or later, I assure you, it'll fall through the ice. They all have their moments. There's a lady up in Highgate, North London, and she made a fortune in 2020, and she's a huge, no money management, a huge gambler, uh, and uh, she uh, was up millions in uh work from home stocks. I am, I, I just preached at her that they all had their moments. Now nah, she held on to them. She's given it all back. Every damn last thing back to the market again. And uh, that bicycle with her computer on, what's it called? Peloton uh, and uh, Zoom and all the uh, usual suspects. She's given it all back to the market again. They all fell through the ice. And they all fell through the ice, folks, about last November or December. So she didn't have uh, an overnight decision to make. These silly things have taken all of uh, uh, 2022 uh, to fall, uh, minus 50%. I see that used car company, Kazoo, that seems to be following me on every London taxi. Uh, and their adverts on, are on the television every night. I see they sponsored uh, a big race at uh, Epsom at the Derby. Uh, their share price has fallen by 90%. So they all have their moments. So when a share hits the vector of a stop loss, you need to sit and think, in my humble opinion, as to whether you want to hold the damn thing or not. My own experience has been sort of tempered by managing money for clients. And all I know is that if you get caught in drawdown like that, well, the, every client will run for the door, uh, simple as that. Uh, so I, I, I now want to look at 
uh, Vectivest UK, get rid of my lines. And I'm laboring this a little bit today. The, the, the whole topic is just so close to my heart. So I hope I'm not boring you. Uh, I want you all to make money. Uh, and uh, if you follow the rules, you're going to find it relatively easy uh, to build capital. I'm not saying it's easy to execute in the slightest and we've got a lot of very experienced traders. I'm just looking down the room. I see Andrew Latu. Hello, Andrew. Uh, 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 and I see quite a few from South Africa. I know France has been at this for a, a lifetime. Eli up in North London has been at this for a very long time. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, Keith been at this for a long time. Bodo's been at this for a long time. So some very, very experienced uh, investors in, in uh, our room. Uh, let's look at the viewers tab. And this is the top stocks on VectorVest by VST. Tongela has been there for quite a long time. We talked about this at length yesterday afternoon. Uh, it took a bit of a hiding yesterday, down 10%. Lots of things took a hiding yesterday. It's trading at 11. We believe it's worth 16. The RV is 1.96. That's as high as I can ever remember on VectorVest. And this is a coal mining company. It was listed last September or October uh, when coal was, in fact, like the Antichrist out of the book of Revelation. And I mean no uh, disservice to those of you that weren't brought up the same way as I was. Uh, Uh, Andrew, uh, I'll email you with uh, pleasure, sir, uh, uh, a little bit later, or email me, david.paul at vectorvest.com, uh, and we can make a plan. Uh, uh, RV, I can't, this, this RV is great. Uh, RS, look at that now. Folks, although this company is only listed six months, this is the old coal out of Anglo, Anglo, London listed Anglo. Uh, it's a superbly managed operation. So it's only been listed for a few weeks. It's got audit accounts going back, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 years. Bodo, any comment on that in Johannesburg? Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, the trend is one the short term trend is 1.23 and the vst which puts together the fundamentals and the technicals into one single number uh is the highest in the pack it's on a buy recommendation there's the stop now i didn't get time to talk about this rt is the short term trend and ci is the long term trend so both the long term trend and the short term trend are positive and the long term trend is really good at 1.77. Now we believe, and FactSet believes, it's going to go earnings at 51% next year. Now that's quite a clip. It's on a forward PE of 3.8. So it's cheap. They've got lots of cash. So fundamentally, the share looks absolutely wonderful. It's had a cracking run, and I have to uh, tell you all that I am a shareholder. Uh, in two continents. <laughs> in two continents. Uh, uh, so uh, on the JSE and on the LSE, uh, Johannesburg Stock Exchange, for those of you that uh, are not familiar with the acronym, uh, this flushed back yesterday. Volume uh, was reasonably high. Uh, and you can see how it's gone back and generated a great deal of liquidity down here and here. 
and this could easily be a huge flush out. Uh, that sort of valuation right up there. And uh, I shall certainly be looking for a reason to add to this position uh, going forward. I don't think that this energy thing is going to go away. Uh, this is just the most amazing chart. That, folks, those of you that are technicians, you should see that textbook cup and handle pattern. The share went into a buy recommendation just here. There was a day where it went to hold. As you can see, in this period, it was on the sale. And it's been on a buy now for, well, uh, it's been the top VST stock for most of the year. And what makes this business so difficult, folks, is that if you get one of these or two of these in your portfolio, you have a cracking year. If you got out there and congratulated yourself in making some money and you didn't get back in again, then you don't have such a good year. You've got to let your winners run. You've got to do your best to let them go. It's too early for me to add. Uh, clearly, uh, we're going to get to the general market in a second. But um, if the general market starts to turn around, we see a little bit of bottoming in sentiment, then uh, I, I, I'm thinking of adding uh, into that position uh, just about here. All right. Uh, uh, this was a very good run here. When you see price rising like this and volume going with it, that's really, really uh, good. Uh, so uh, this is also quite good. You can see here we went sideways. And within that, it doesn't look like much now because of this big rump. But in this period, uh, earnings per share, forecast earnings per share has gone from two to three. Uh, that's a, what, 50% increase in earnings per share since April, folks. Since April. This is a cash-making machine, and most of the cash is in the bank. Uh, so I'm looking for a reason to add to this. Do I know what's going to happen next? Of course I don't. It's a question of probabilities. Uh, uh, but uh, if I see uh, a little bit of... Uh, bottoming here, then I, I'm going to have a go at that. Uh, this is uh, Gresham House Energy. As you can see, and you know, if you look at Vectorvest UK and Vectorvest US, and of the rest of the, with Vectorvest folks, you get the UK, the US, Canada, Australia, and the whole of Europe. I don't look at Europe much, but I look at the rest of the countries and all I can see at the top is energy, uh, coal, uh, and uh, oil, uh, and uh, a little bit of commodities uh, at the top, although commodities have taken a, a little bit of a sell-off. Uh, this is an interesting uh, investment trust here, Caledonia. Been around forever. It's got a 50-year track record. Please don't write in and say it's 47 or 55. It's got a huge track record of uh, growing its dividend. And ladies and gentlemen, if dividends are important, this fella is going to pay a special, I think of £2.20 plus its normal dividend. I think you've got to buy it by the 16th. I think it's the 16th of June. It could be the 16th of July, something like that. Uh, it's undervalued. RV is 1.72. RS is 1.32. Short-term trend is a bit flat. We believe it's going to grow earnings at 39% next year. It's on a hold recommendation. Clearly, I don't want to wait until that gets into a buy recommendation. Okay, uh, so that's something uh, to think about. Vietnam also looks very good. We had uh, uh, a, a presentation Paul says, if the earnings per share is generally reported to the market through earnings. Now, the, the earnings per share that we've got here is forecast earnings per share, uh, which is our and FACSS best shot at that. So, Paul, that is a measure of the future. And that is the biggest check I've got to sign every month is to pay FACSS. 
very expensive data. I'm not sure what you mean by granularity. I'm just a simple trader, I'm afraid. Uh, it's a uh, fact sets, collated version of what the analysts say, Paul, yes. Our best estimate of the future. And you learn to trust it. You le really learn to trust it. It's rarely let us down, especially if the stock's got a high RS as well. The higher the RS, uh, the uh, more uh, sound the financials are, uh, the easier it is to make a, a strong prediction of the future. Uh, and that's why if I was managing money, it would be uh, high RV, high RS, undervalued. So Caledonian investments would be something that I look at. I, I normally don't look at investment trusts. Uh, I'm happier in companies themselves. Now, this is a company that I know very well, uh, South 32. Uh, it's uh, the old South African assets, mostly of BHP Bulletin that was spun off right at the lows of the commodity cycle. Uh, and uh, uh, trading at 259, we believe it's worth 391. The uh, RV is 1.82, the RS is 1.33. Short term trend is not good. Heading back. VST is 1.34, very respectable, also on a hold. And uh, the CI is 1.58. Should grow earnings at 45% next year. So that, that looks uh, uh, like a very good prospect to me. Now, Serica, we've done so well in Serica. Uh, although I haven't got a position in Serica myself, but we have got many 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 vector vest customers that have in fact i think we've got the uh, biggest uh, private client in uh, in serica uh, on our books uh, out in oxford and uh, uh, so paul if you're listening that's you <laughs> so uh, it's undervalued uh, off a bit yesterday rv is 1.87 and that's quite something rs is 1.39 uh, short-term trend is down uh, it's on a sell, okay, and the stop loss is 3.02. Uh, if it's on a sell, the stop's above the price. Uh, CI is 1.8, so the short-term trend is down, but the underlying trend is up, man. So always a good place for looking for a reversal. Well, I'm getting more into swing trading from here. And GRT is 45%. That's quite something as well. If we look at the chart, I particularly like the stock it's pulled back and uh clearly uh sometimes i can be too much of a technician but uh, uh there is our valuation and clearly it got a smack because of the windfall tax and uh, let me get all the lines off here so we can see the wood for the trees it's pulled back in this uh uh, and it's come right back to these old tops. It's on a sell recommendation. You can see it went to a sell just here. It fell through the ice somewhere about there. Uh, and now it seems to want to turn. Uh, if we have a look at it on a weekly chart, uh, it shows the picture reasonably well. Uh, it's pulled back into this range. Uh, and uh, as a uh, swing trader, I, I love uh, my eight-week stochastic, which is right down in the buy area. Uh, it's that low as a Fibonacci retracement. This up week, last week, was on big volume. And this was on low volume, but there's very little range in here. And that, that's quite positive, uh, although I haven't got time to uh, go into price and volume relationships here. Uh, if we look at a, a Fibonacci retracement from that low to that high, uh, you can see that 
that's sitting at a 78% retracement, very useful indeed. So uh, I think that there's a, a potential, once this goes on to a buy, that there's a potential for a very strong move in Serica. So that's a swing trade in Serica. That, uh, 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 hello, Andy. Uh, how are you, man? Uh, Andy, I think that the vector based stop loss, uh, as soon as this goes to a buy, Andy, uh, the vector based stop loss will now move back below the market. But I don't think the stop loss needs to be any uh, further away than a few ticks underneath that low. It's either going to work or not. So uh, that is a swing trade that I think is in process in Serica. Uh, and uh, it's got a bit of work to do yet, but uh, that's two things that I'm going to be looking at myself. Uh, when the market does turn a, a swing trade along, and that could be a, a mighty trade from three pounds to five pounds, folks, in this uh, run up. And uh, do I know what's going to happen next? Of course, I don't know what's going to happen next. Only an idiot would say they know what's going to happen next in this environment. Uh, what could go wrong? Inflation's at 40-year highs. Uh, we've got a global food crisis, and we've got uh, uh, the concept of a third world war. For example, if Putin invades one of those Eastern European countries that are in NATO, then we are treaty bound to go and defend them. Uh, and I'm, sometimes I'm glad I'm too old to carry a rifle. Uh, so. Uh, but the probabilities there look very good, especially the swing trade on the weekly chart. Now, Andy, who's a big dividend man, tells us that it goes X dividend on the 30th of June, a nine pence dividend. Okay, Andy, thank you for that. Much appreciated. Uh, so uh, let's just wait. Doing nothing, as I remind the vector base regulars frequently, doing nothing is much more difficult than it would seem. So uh, I hope that that illustrates. Uh, we have a lady who runs our London group. She'll be taking our uh, uh, Streetwise Investors Club, which is an online user group tomorrow night. And uh, she finds all her stocks just from the front page of Vectorvest doing a, a process very similar to what I've just described, undervalued, High RB, high RS, uh, good short-term, good long-term trend, good growth rate. Uh, and uh, she shows that process uh, frequently. Uh, uh, however, we can look for stocks that suit our objectives in Unisearch. Where, and I'll show you in a second where Unisearch, for example, can put together all these parameters to actually find some good stocks. And this is my uh, a little search that I find is quite useful for my own work. So if I go back now to my PowerPoint presentation, uh, how to determine market direction. And sometimes, and certainly since in the run up from 2002, uh, the market was rising. It was a great time to be in the market. And most of this year, the overall market has been falling, and it was far. It's been a really difficult place to make some money. Now there's always money to be made. You just have got to look harder for it. And uh, you know, pretty much the only thing that's rising is oil stocks. So our mantra is buying rising stocks and rising markets. And of course, if it was another afternoon. We could look at short selling. Uh, short selling, very difficult in the UK. There are very few, if no, uh, inverse exchange traded funds. The only one that I can think of is SUK2, which has got reasonable liquidity. Uh, if you want to sell stocks short, you're going to have to open up a spread betting account or a CFD account, which in fact uh, means that you've got leverage to take into account. Now, leverage can be wonderful as long as it's managed well. Uh, it's much, uh, it's, it's less difficult to get into trouble now because the FCA, in fact, reduced the level of leverage that the CFD and the spread betting companies could give. Uh, but 
Uh, nevertheless, uh, an awful lot of people run into trouble with leverage, where you can uh, put down 20% uh, 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 and uh, if the market goes your way, you make a fortune. If it falls, uh, you lose all your money. So leverage used well is wonderful. Uh, unfortunately, the 80% of people who go to spread betting, in fact, invariably lose because of errors in uh, money management. They bet too much of their account in any one trade. So we're going to talk about buying rising stocks and rising markets. And I suppose I should add here, I want to buy rising stocks, high RV, high RS, that are either on a buy or a hold recommendation. In other words, they're rising in price. And Dr. Delito says, being on the wrong side of the market is the worst thing that can happen to an investor. But it doesn't have to happen to you. And that's my metaphor of uh, take forever to get up there and they fall darn quickly, as we found out over the last couple of days, when the market fell through the ice of that one week consolidation that we had prior to the American CPI number uh, last Friday and uh, the ECB dithering on Thursday. Uh, the market fell in America in the last hour. And uh, the reason that I've been given for that by some very good friends in New York City, South African guys who are working on the floor there, they tell me that the uh, market didn't like the ECB uh, and especially the deviation in bond spreads that was occurring in the peripheral European economies. Uh, so bond spreads in uh, Italy and in Greece uh, moving well away from uh, the German bond. Uh, so, and uh, John Authors wrote a piece about it at the weekend on Bloomberg. John Authors, who used to be at EFT, is now with Bloomberg. And uh, he felt it was a rerun to another Euro crisis. Uh, so that, that'd be a good piece to research if you just uh, research John Authors, A-U-T-H-E-R-S, at Bloomberg. Uh, wrote a very, very good piece on that uh, last Saturday on Bloomberg. Uh, so I, 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 this is last night's close on VectorVest UK, folks. Uh, and I've blown up the middle of the page so we can actually look at uh, market direction. And uh, for the last six weeks, Plus, and for most of the year, the longest term measure of the trend has been down. So we've got three words here, down, down, confirm, down. First of all, the overall market is measured by the Vector Vest Composite UK, which is an equally weighted index of all of the shares that we follow on the London market on AIM. It is the broadest measure of the London market that I know of. It could be broader, but I don't know of it. The first word is the short-term trend of the London market. The second word is the underlying trend or longer-term trend of the London market. And this is our longest-term measure of the trend, a confirmed down. Confirmed on is no more than the underlying trend confirmed by price action. Now, it's laid out like this so that those poor unfortunate people that don't like charts don't have to go to charts. I love looking at charts myself, but some people don't. Uh, and so you can take a glance at Vector Vest and it's on your phone. And you can tell whether the market is rising or falling. And for most of us, certainly if I was managing your money, for most of us, the market is rising or falling based on the confirmed signal. And that confirmed signal has been down for most of 2022. I'll show you the chart in a second. And sooner or later, when this turns up, there'll be a green confirmed up there. And that, in fact, is going to and it tell us that it's safe to go back into the market again. 
Now, what is the purpose of the old traffic light? Well, the traffic light measures the short-term trend and it measures the strength and the momentum and the breadth, the number of shares that are rising divided by the number of shares that are falling of the short-term trend. And as you can see, the short-term trend is down and it's falling quite fast. Not as fast as it was yesterday. It's falling quite fast. And Vectivest does not advocate buying stocks at this time. Now, some years back, we were debating a signal for conservative traders that on position traders to be able to work out when it's safe to be in the market. And uh, we put our minds to this. And one of our uh, very experienced subscribers down in Wales, Carwin, uh, felt that the best solution was to wait for a confirmed up and that the old pointer was nicely in the green. And that meant means that the longer longest term measure of the trend on Vectorvest is up, and the short term trend is up with some conviction. And that's the signal that we've taken uh, since Calvin, uh, in fact, uh, suggested that it must be five years ago. So now there are short term measures, and you can see the short term measure turned up here for uh, a, a, a couple of days. Uh, and since June the 8th, and one day that was, let's get my diary. That was since last Wednesday. Uh, the short term trend turned down, and uh, uh, that would mean that uh, all the measures of the trend were down, and certainly short term traders could use this signal to short the market. Spread betters can use the primary wave or the short term trend to actually be very aggressive in the marketplace, but you need to be quite fleet of foot to do that. Probably looking at intraday charts. And that's not the objective of this. But I, I for example, trade the American market uh, quite aggressively on intraday charts for cash, uh, the S&P 500 for cash. Uh, and what I don't blow, uh, I, in fact, uh, use that to finance uh, uh, my uh, SIP. And I use the primary wave a lot in conjunction with some very simple short-term signals uh, from uh, a, a one-hour chart or maybe 30-minute chart of the S&P 500 uh, to put together high probability signals. Uh, and uh, I, in fact, didn't short the market. I got a couple of trades short last week, but I missed the big trade short on Thursday. It just happened too late in the day for me. It was in the last hour of trading. That was at 8 o'clock last Thursday night. It started to move, and I'd lost focus by that stage. And then it just kept on going. I couldn't get an entry point. So uh, at the moment, we're waiting. And th that's the Vector S composite, folks. And there's no doubt when the market's charging up like this, market timing's a pain in the backside uh, because most of the signals came to nothing. So there was the big signal, uh, that was COVID. Uh, absolutely zero diversification in this. It doesn't matter how diversified you were, you got a, got a smack. Uh, and we then moved up, and that was our first signal somewhere down around here. Uh, folk laughed at me when I was buying stocks here. We then got this sell signal. Now, when you get a sell signal, folks, it doesn't mean you get, sell everything. It just means don't buy any more. Watch your stop losses very carefully indeed. And then all of a sudden, we got another buy signal. Now, the fundamental behind this buy signal was the Pfizer vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine, that was the Pfizer vaccine that pushed this back up again. Uh, and we ran, plus a great deal of money being pumped in uh, by the central banks around the world. Uh, and, you know, at, at the time, I, 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 my analogy was uh, that uh, the central banks were pumping money in uh, a bit like a fireman's hose filling my bathtub. Uh, and uh, uh, let's push this up. And then we got nothing came of this, nothing came of that, nothing came of this. And then all of a sudden we fell through the ice. We had this little triangular consolidation uh, and then it fell through the ice. 
and we've been down most of the year. We got a signal here uh, and that didn't follow through and that we've been down now for the last couple of months. And that's where we ended up yesterday, uh, down around these lows. FTSE's back is down this morning and I would expect that we're going to, unless something happens in New York City, a reversal in New York City, I, would, I, I think now we want uh, to go lower. Unfortunately, from a purely technical point of view, uh, uh, this bit could easily be repeated down till here. So uh, it's time to be very careful indeed. Top and bottom pickers become cotton pickers, they say. So we just need to let the dust settle for a couple of weeks down here before we get in, doing nothing. And we could quite easily be letting the dust settle, ladies and gentlemen, until September or October. All right, I'm hoping that's not the case, uh, but this is certainly the biggest setback we've seen uh, uh, since 2008. Now, this morning, uh, there was quite a few famous people on Twitter talking, saying that this was very similar to what happened in autumn, uh, October, November, December 2018, uh, and then the Fed stepped in and, in fact, didn't put up rates. Uh, cajoled by uh, Trump at the time. Uh, I think that uh, that's a very poor parallel. This is much more like what happened in 2008. So have to be very careful here. The market will turn, folks, when we least expect it. Uh, but the trend is down and uh, no more, uh, it doesn't matter how good they look, uh, I need to be very careful about adding to positions uh, or get into new positions in this environment. There'll be plenty of time to bottom fish uh, when this thing beats itself out down here somewhere. Just remember, take very good care of your money, folks. Otherwise, it will find a new owner. Uh, so uh, we've got... Uh, Spent quite a bit of time, folks. That's a little uni search that I find quite useful in my own work. And we're going to actually have a look through them now. Now, as I say, in my own work, I don't look at financial trusts. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with uh, investment trusts. And uh, certainly, uh, I think Jonathan Davis would uh, uh, disagree with me here. But uh, he's the fellow who's written the uh, investment trust handbook. First class uh, gentleman. Uh, I've taken... Uh, investment trusts out. I feel happier myself in companies. Uh, that's just me. I'm looking for the price being less than the value. Now, if I was swing trading over a few weeks to a few months, I might be tempted to take that, that line out. In other words, as, as you know, at an auction, and this is an auction, uh, prices can rise well above, above value. So if you're in the share for a couple of weeks to a couple of months, you may be tempted to take that level out. But certainly to find uh, good quality stocks, uh, that is uh, a number one requirement. I don't like to get into stocks with a relative value of less than 1.25. I want the stock to be at least pointing upwards. And this is the comfort index. This is the long-term trend greater than one. I want the relative safety to be greater than one. I want the growth rate to be above 25%. And the share should either be on a buy or a hold. Now, you could decide that you want a dividend. And you may put in a dividend greater than 2%, dividend growth greater than 10%, all sorts of things that you can add in here. Now, what I've done is that I've actually decided to sort, especially in this environment, I've decided to sort the stocks that come out of this by relative safety. So I've replaced the standard sort VST uh, with a much more conservative sort relative safety. So uh, the minimum requirement in relative safety is one, but the shares that come out of this I'm going to rank them by relative safety. So let's just do that. We'll go out of this now, and I'm keeping you probably longer than I should, but I get so excited about this stuff. Uh, if I go to Unisearch, that's the Unisearch, and I put it, because it's rated by relative safety, it is a conservative search. Okay. Uh, if I run that search, 
that's what I get. Tungela. Tungela is a river, folks. Uh, South 32, it's a coal mine, but <laughs> it's a river. <laughs> Caledonia. James Latham, which is a lovely little company. This is smart. It's totally a liquid. Uh, so let's just chart those. Come on, girl. There we go. So that's uh, that's when uh, TGA was listed the way back here. Uh, and we've discussed this. Uh, uh, and let's get rid of the stochastic. Uh, let's get rid of volume. And uh, there's our chart. And you can see this big ramp up in earnings and uh, that this earnings moving up by 50% since April. Let's see how it does. Uh, let it build a base down here. Let the sentiment of the general market turn a little bit. Uh, Paul asks a very good question uh, about liquidity. By all means, Paul, I could add in, uh, and I would add in, Paul, uh, a liquidity measure. The problem with doing that at this type of seminar is that everybody's measure of liquidity is different. So uh, for many, many people, if they're starting out, let's say with 20, 50,000 pounds, there's going to be an awful lot more shares that are uh, liquid uh, compared to somebody who's got a million pounds in the market or 10 million pounds in the market. So it's quite difficult at this type of thing to actually make an estimate of what liquidity should be. Uh, so, uh, but by all means, I can add in, let's say, a line of code, which would say that the share should have a uh, average uh, daily volume of, uh, let's say, 250,000 shares, as measured by a 50-day moving average of volume, Paul. I could easily put that line in. Okay, uh, TGA is down 4% today. Yeah, uh, Andy, it, it's a miserable day. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to see it take out that low. Uh, and of course, it can fall to the floor uh, right to that level easily, easily. But I, I think it'll, uh, it'll uh, it's too early to do anything. Just sit and wait, just sit and wait. Uh, uh, that level, uh, uh, this level here, there'll be a heap of stop losses sitting around that level, uh, a heap. Those people that moved their stop loss yesterday would have moved it back to here again today. Uh, be an awful lot of liquidity uh, for big funds, anybody who wants to buy it uh, underneath that level. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm watching it carefully. So that, that this is South 32, uh, and uh, South 32, very long uh, line in the sand here. Are we going to get back to that? I suspect we're we're just about to get there. So that would be a, a very important line in the sand. Uh, nothing to do until the general market turns, and clearly uh, this, in fact, came up nicely with all commodity stocks based on China going back to work. And then, of course, China uh, locking down again uh, caused this to pull back, plus the lack of sentiment, as I mentioned. When the police raid the brothel, everybody gets arrested. Uh, very little diversification uh, in yesterday's sell-off. And, of course, oil came back a little bit yesterday as well at times. So, uh, Looking at this very carefully, I know many people will say that this is a potential head and shoulders reversal, and certainly uh, down underneath the lows of this trend line, it would have to be looked at. I don't have a position personally in uh, South 32. Uh, this is Caledonian, and uh, that's the vector vest valuation. It's moved up very nicely indeed. It it's, would seem to be trading some form of a uh, rounding bottom here uh, and uh, I think that uh, a move above that level would be very interesting indeed. Can you see that maybe it's, it's my technician's mind and overdrive but I can see a cup and handle there. Uh, this is James Latham. I, I've been watching James Latham uh, and there is uh, this triangular pattern folks as you can see. 
there's no sellers here whatsoever, uh, even although the market is awful, absolutely no sellers. Uh, uh, Paul, this could be an example of a share that's fine for relatively small players, but larger players uh, would find it very, very difficult to get both in and out of the thing. Uh, this is the, as the stock rose, now this doesn't look like much now. This rise doesn't look like much now, but uh, because of this ramp. But in this area, that rise in earnings per share was enough for the program to actually revalue the stock. And it is my experience that when a stock goes sideways like this, and within the sideways pattern, you get this big ramp up in earnings per share that it breaks the right way. So uh, that looks like a sitter to me, folks, that that can go to 18 relatively quickly from here. Again, on our Monday afternoon sessions, we've got so many really uh, experienced traders and investors. And we've got one very, very experienced man who knows this company exceptionally well. Uh, his uncle or his son works there, something like that. And uh, he's uh, buying on every pullback here. So uh, uh, it's on a buy, but the general market is heading down. Let's wait. Uh, for the general market to turn, uh, but that looks good to me. So that's, that's uh, uh, at least a couple out of this exercise. This is a smart, uh, it's it, Paul, uh, Paul G, uh, even for the smallest accounts, this is going to be difficult. Uh, I, I think you could probably get in, Paul, but it's a bit like marriage, folks, you know, easy to get in and bloody expensive to get out. Uh, and I, uh, if that ranks of chauvinism, you have my apologies, ladies. Uh, uh, this is uh, Karen. Earnings per share rose from just about making a profit and, and clearly with everything else. And this looks as if it's skybound, doesn't it, folks? Uh, again, my technician's mind sees this wonderful cup and handle. The cup and handle pattern made famous by a gentleman called Bill O'Neill. Sometimes you can see it better on the, uh, and this is the five year chart uh, and made a, a big bottom down here with, uh, you know, oil, you had, you had to pay to take it away down here. Uh, and now it's made this lovely cup and handle. And I think that that's heading to three pounds from here. Thank you, Paul. Paul says there's a deal there. There's a deal. Uh, uh, and uh, that, uh, to me, looks like a sitter. Okay. Uh, if you've got the stomach, let's look at the RS on that uh, for a second. Uh, Karen Energy. RS is fair at 1.23. 1.23. Uh, if we have a problem at the moment, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Vector Vest philosophy is that uh, you want to buy 10 to 15 stocks and you don't want to be in any more than two in the one sector. So uh, I think that that would be very, very difficult to do, even in the American market at the moment. Because if you look at Vectorvest US, the only thing that seems to be following through is oil and gas. All right, so uh, it doesn't matter how aggressive you want to be, if you follow those rules, uh, uh, and even if you exaggerate those rules, you'd still be in substantially in cash. So let's go a little bit further. But out of this, we're, st we're starting to see some fairly simple stocks uh, and some fairly simple stuff that we could uh, consider buying. Uh, that is a, a yearly chart of this. ENOG, well, uh, there's another oil stock. Look at this beautiful earnings per share growth over the last year from 50 to 1.50. This was just such a textbook setup here. Uh, uh, that little uh, ascending triangle, it broke and it tested and then we move again. And what I see now folks is another test of this. Let's break it in. Uh, as you can see, we're just about here at the moment uh, where this has broken, it's come back, and certainly it's on a buy. Uh, if the general market writes itself, and I saw some uh, a nice big green day here, that looks as if that wants to go again. So that's something else. But I, I do appreciate that it is another oil stock, uh, and uh, one needs to be uh, 
make sure that you don't be completely overweight. This the, this uh, sector thing that's going on reminds me of way back in, when I first came back from South Africa to the UK, uh, and I was commuting at that stage, 13, I think it was, and 14, the only thing that was moving was building stocks. And uh, both myself and Susan Thornborough were vastly overweight in building stocks, and we got away with it. Uh, so uh, building stocks and JD Sports were pretty much the only things we had. Uh, we were naughty, but we got away with it. And uh, uh, a big part of this flat that I'm sitting in here in Notting Hill was paid for by, in that era. This is the man group. And again, this uh, uh, at the Mellow Show, in fact, one of the guys from a, a management company there uh, used to work for these people. And uh, uh, he told me that the uh, success uh, uh, of the man group is its division, which has got a trend following algo, AHT, I think they call themselves. And because markets have been trending so well, it's made money. Uh, I made an awful lot of money recently, which is pushing this up. Uh, I particularly liked it down here as it moved into a buy, uh, but it pulled back in a flag pattern. Uh, and uh, you can see that it broke out of the flag and now it's come back to test. I'm not in, it went to hold again, but if I see the general market turning and it goes back onto a buy, that's certainly something I'll be interested in. Very interestingly, we can see this huge example of a cup and handle pattern. Look at it, folks, huge cup and handle over five years. And as you can see, my little technician uh, mind working overtime, that would be the target. That's 100, that's a £1.50 target. That would take that up to about £4. Wouldn't that be nice? But it's a, a little bit uh, too soon. If you're in, if you bought there, which I didn't, but because the general market was falling, but if you were in, you'd be sweating it out now, still on a hold. And unfortunately, markets don't go up in straight lines. Uh, they go up in a series of steps and they invariably test. They'll break come back and test the previous level before they go again. That can be incredibly aggravating. This is Airtel Africa. I'm quite sure it's down again today. I have a position in this. Uh, and uh, uh, to me, it's gone back to hold. We'd be sweating it out, which I am. Uh, uh, and it's probably down today as well on this negative market. I I'm very happy with it, however. Oh, it's slightly up, says Julie. That's that's really good. Thank you, Julie. Uh, so it's it's slightly up. With any luck, that this level is going to hold it. They always just 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 say to yourself, they always test. Okay, they're always. It's called a test for a damn good reason. Okay, uh, it tests the level and it tests your resilience. Uh, so uh, uh, this is Anglo Eastern. Now this is food. I really like this. Beautiful trend, earnings per share is rising. I'm not sure of the liquidity, Paul G, uh, uh, but it's on a buy recommendation. As you can see, it burst out of this symmetrical triangle. And uh, to me, as soon as the general market starts to go again, that will go. Okay, so uh, and uh, we are in the throes of, a, I think, a world, a pers uh, that's the most worrying thing out of this whole, war. Uh, if, uh, those of you that are students of history will know that both Stalin and Hitler before him had a go at the Ukraine uh, food supply and its ability to, in fact, uh, uh, push politics around the world. Uh, and Putin is going to do exactly the same thing. Uh, 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 that's really, really worrying. And a big percentage of the world could, in fact, not be able to feed their children in that environment. And uh, that's going to affect us all. Uh, so uh, that uh, the prices will go up. Uh, rich people will be okay because it's the food is a small part of their disposable income. But uh, poor people are going to struggle, uh, and uh, uh, we can see that everywhere. Uh, so uh, that really looks good to me. That really looks good to me. Uh, AAF really, really looks good. 
uh, to me. So uh, that's another thing June looked at. That's a food. This is I3 energy again, petroleum. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, there's the level. It's testing these levels. Uh, you can see how that level was tested. It was a good sign. Didn't quite get back there. It's always a good sign. Uh, and then this level was tested exactly. And uh, uh, it'll break sooner or later. So that, that, that's another energy stock. Uh, Oakley. Uh, coming back with a general market. I'm going to take the value off here so we can see it a little bit. Uh, difficult chart that. Uh, well rated company. Uh, but a difficult looking chart. Old Charlie Munger would look at that and he would say too hard. Uh, but uh, certainly well rated. Look at the values up here. Uh, I think it'll test that level again before that's uh, finished. Uh, uh, this is Virtu Motors. Uh, and this is something that's exceptionally well rated. Let me get my hydroglyphics off here. Uh, and uh, I, I, I use this, watch these stocks every day, folks. That's why there's so much stuff on the chart. Really like this pullback to that level. Let's get a bit more data. Let's get the value off because we can see that it's undervalued. And uh, again, we can see this uh, into that range. It's tested this level. Now it's testing this level. And if we put on my old friend Fibonacci, you can see that. And if, if you do join VectorVest, those people that are not members, you're going to hear a lot of, about the 78% uh, retracement. Uh, we've also got a three way that looks outstanding to me. That looks absolutely outstanding to me. Uh, it's uh, come back hardly anything with the overall market here. Uh, and uh, it's on a hold, uh, and I, I think that if we see this breaking, oh, David, you clot. If I see this breaking, uh, this particular level up around here, that that's got a cracking future in it. So that, and I hope I've given you an idea of the process, folks. Uh, and I do my best to talk everybody through that process on a Monday afternoon. I'm far from being perfect. I make mistakes. A market doesn't go my way all the time, but all I can promise you is that everything I do, everybody sees the good trades and they see the bad trades, uh, uh, warts and all, okay? Uh, very important to me. I have a trading partner called Tom Hogart, and uh, Tom and I were in business together in a, a live trading room called Which Way Today? And uh, we traded together for three or four days, three or four years, giving live signals. And when we first met, uh, and uh, we uh, went out for a drink one night and one of those nights where one beer led to 20 and uh, we promised uh, each other that we would never ever talk about things that we don't do ourselves and uh, uh, we both stuck to that I assure you that's that must be nearly 15 years ago now so uh, Virtu looks really good to me uh, John Menzies is a deal let's forget about that now this was a great trade here uh, and uh, a run up uh, next, I think it's next Friday, there's a summit. And I'm talking about swing trading in the summit. And in fact, that's one of the examples that I put in. Uh, uh, there's the vector S valuation up here. Uh, that would have been a great trade. It needs to come back a little bit now. So folks, uh, I've kept you far, far too long. I've tried to work through the process itself. Now, those of you that are VectorVest customers, uh, well, you've got VectorVest already. Uh, those of you that are not, I have an offer for you. Uh, I'm sure you suspected that already. Well, uh, you can either do it yourself or you can use the power of VectorVest to put this all at your fingertips to give you the numbers that really matter without a great deal of stress. No, there's no extra charges at all, Peter. Uh, Pete, you get me and you get all everything uh, included in VectorVest for the uh, one amount. There's no extra charges at all. All right. Uh, we want you to be a customer, Pete, for the next 50 years. Uh, so to burst out of that, uh, 
30 days and uh, uh, vector vest, uh, uh, it's a fiver, okay? Uh, and uh, you can't even get a pint of beer That my local pub, the Sun and Splendor, their cheapest pint is seven pounds and five pence. Uh, uh, and that's that Foster's muck that you wouldn't drink uh, unless you were desperate. Uh, Oh, Bodo, thank you. That's very kind. Bodo's our mining expert in Johannesburg. Uh, so if you give me 30 days, we'll turn your portfolio around. Uh, and even if you're brand new to the market, we'll turn it around. Uh, and uh, you've got to say to yourself, what's the alternative? Well, what are the alternative on uh, the alternatives on YouTube? You've got that Dave Ramsey guy ranting on that you can never have a decent car again because uh, if you took the repayments and uh, put those into a, a savings account, you would get rich. And you've got that other dreadful Orman woman saying that the reason you're not rich is that you have a Starbucks every day. So uh, if you don't want to go down that route, uh, then uh, making some proactive decisions on the stock market in good quality companies that are growing their earnings aggressively and safely when the general market is rising, being strong when the general market is rising and being very careful when the general market is falling, that will get you there without a great deal of effort. And you can still drive a decent car and you can still have a, a three pound coffee uh, even twice a day. Uh, so uh, I put together a little course which is built into VectorVest. First bit, it's a video course, easy to go through last about half an hour each section how to analyze any stock in 30 seconds so you can tell undervalued growing earnings strongly and safely at a glance what's the uh, share trend like short-term trend long-term trend and then how to get rid of your bad ones how to manage risk uh, third module is to know when it's safe to be in the market. And then uh, the fourth module, uh, you've sorted the good stocks from the bad. You've got rid of the bad ones. You now know when it's safe to buy back in again. And then, of course, what to buy. So cherry picking checklists. You can either do it from the stock viewer or you can write them into Unisearch or you can use one of the pre-programmed Unisearches. And then uh, how to put it all together in a 10 minute management plan. And uh, across in America, they charge a fortune for that, but we're new. So if you give me 30 days, we'll go through this. And it's a fiver, folks. Uh, Vectorvest.co.uk forward slash wealth. And that includes 30 days access to Vectorvest, which is worth 49 pounds on its own. And after the 30 days, if you decide to stay with us, then it's £49 a month. It's on a month by month basis. My promise to you is that if you can't make money, uh, you can stop at any time. And uh, uh, that includes, Pete, all of the extra training uh, that I do, that uh, my colleagues in the US do. And, uh, Stan Heller, who's my counterpart in Canada, does. And uh, a young man called Russell in Australia does, and, and Susan in Europe does, all of that uh, is in the price. And we have an 0800 number that you can actually uh, call us on from 12 o'clock midday to 12 o'clock at night, uh, and that's open Monday to Friday. So any problems uh, with your account, any problems with uh, IT, any problems with interpreting what's going on, then there's somebody at the end of a phone. Now, if you phone at half past two in the afternoon, that's America opening up, you could go into a queue. There's no doubt about that. But if you phone before half past two, from 12 to two, there'll be nobody there. And if you phone from four o'clock again, then you go straight through. And you've got four o'clock till midnight. So, uh, and... Well, I've done this, this, this young man's from Minehead, north of uh, Somerset, uh, and he's been in the market now 30 years. He's never made a penny. Uh, he's, in fact, 
been buying at the top and selling at the bottom. And he tells me he's got a written plan. We shall see. Now, and folks, if you uh, don't think it's the best fiver you've ever spent, £5.95 you've ever spent, then you can come around here to Pembridge Square and I will, in fact, either give you a £5.95 back or take you across the road and buy you a pint in the sun and splendor at £7.50 because I wouldn't make you drink Foster's. Okay. So uh, any questions, ladies and gentlemen? I've tried to walk you through the VectorVest process as best I can in the time available. Uh, markets are falling. They just want to sit this out. They will turn when we least expect it. Okay. Cheers, everyone. I'm sorry I kept you so long. Uh, I, I, I say every week that I have to be more focused and I, I in fact, never achieve that. So uh, uh, take care of yourselves. I look, especially the new people, I look forward to working with you. Okay. Cheers, everyone. So it's vectorvest.co.uk forward slash wealth. That'll be great. Bye-bye now.